everybody, and welcome to TechBeat uh, this morning. We're so happy to have you with us um, here in the podcast studio at uh, Silicon Slopes HQ in Lehigh. Um, right now, I'm joined in the studio by Garrett Clark, the executive director of Silicon Slopes. We're going to come back around to Garrett um, in a moment here, and John Bowers will be joining us uh, momentarily. He's uh, caught in a meeting, um, certainly uh, the entire Silicon Slopes organization right now are um, with just a, what, a week and a half here uh, before Summit are really scrambling to kind of lock in the final details and, and pull off a really amazing event. So it's, a, it's an exciting and busy time around here, um, and we, we appreciate them taking the time the, this morning to sit down with us and talk a little bit about um, what uh, they're doing here at Silicon Slopes and what the summit's going to be about um, and to be featured on, on TechBeat. Um, welcome again to TechBeat. We're super happy that you're joining us here. Uh, TechBeat is where leaders learn, innovate, and grow. My name is Earl Foote, the host of TechBeat and CEO, founder of Nexus IT. Uh, Nexus IT is a white glove outsourced IT support and cybersecurity services firm based here in northern Utah and servicing a nationwide footprint. Um, did want to quickly mention that TechBeat is now on all major podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Google, wherever you consume your, your podcast. We would appreciate your support, uh, your subscription out there. Tune in wherever you're at. You can consume in audio or video uh, formats. Um, we will have some Q&A um, here as long as there's time or there's relevant questions throughout uh, the 45 minutes or so we're going to spend together here today. Um, and uh, so, you know, feel free to wherever you're joining us from, whatever platform, post your questions um, about Silicon Slopes, about Summit coming up here in a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, uh, outside of that, just want to quickly thank everybody that's in studio with us today to help. Uh, we've got Dave and Connor and Mallory Lovestad, our director of marketing, um, who are here running the show, running audio and video. Um, and um, anyways, uh, let's see, before I get to our guest, um, quick mentions of upcoming segments that we've got coming uh, throughout the end of the year. Uh, Sid Tetro, CEO of Brandlist, Josh Little, founder uh, and CEO of Volley. Um, we have... Um, Nate Randall, CEO of Gab Wireless, that will, will be joining us. Tara Spalding, uh, Managing Director of Boone Startup. Romaine Marshall, who is uh, one of the nation's foremost cyber attorneys um, and a really good friend of mine that's going to come on the show. Johnny Hanna, co-founder, CEO um, of Homey. And we're also doing a, a female in tech, female in cyber segment um, with some of our friends, Tara Anderson, Mallory Lovestad, again, our Director of Marketing and Aubrey Murray from Perfe uh, Perpetual Storage, who will be joining us in November. Um, outside of that, let's get to uh, our guest of the hour. Um, uh, Garrett Clark is the executive director of Silicon Slopes. He enjoys interacting with uh, the local startup community and feels lucky when he gets to help uh, tell their story. He enjoys casting a fly in mountain streams, bragging about America. And taking, uh, excuse me, and talking to entre entrepreneurs doing extraordinary things. Um, Garrett, let's come back around in just a moment now that John's joined us. So, not that I'm shifting, you know, the, the limelight here. Let's, let's go to John, Garrett. Let's do it. <laughs> um, now, let me just uh, quickly read John's bio so that everybody knows who he is as well. Um, John John Bowers has extensive experience as a founder and operator in varied uh, in varied business throughout his career. His experience includes franchise ownership of multiple retail and e-commerce brands, business development in professional and collegiate sports, founding and operating a creative uh, media firm, venture capital, entertainment and events, and ownership of multiple software companies. He has encountered and overcome a vast array of challenges that confront today's entrepreneurs and their businesses and teams, and currently serves as the chief business officer and partnerships director at Silicon Slopes, where he focuses on building Supportive programs and resources for Utah's entrepreneurial system. So, gentlemen, welcome to TechBeat. Thanks for joining me. I know it's a busy time. It's an honor to be joining you and chatting today. It's going to be fun. Well done with those intros. No <clears throat> kidding. All right. Well, you know, uh, I've done it a couple of times. I'm still working on it, but uh, staying uh, good. Garrett, let's uh, let's chat just a little bit. You know, um, on TechBeat, I always like to highlight the story behind leaders. You know, that join us um, here on TechBeat, and so. Maybe if you just kind of, you know, um, fill in the human side of who Garrett Clark is, you know, where you grew up, um, your journey going from childhood to landing at Silicon Slopes and being the executive director, 
um, you know, help the community kind of understand who you are and, and who's the guy, you know, one, one of the guys who's at the helm of this organization, right? Yeah. Uh, born and raised in Utah, grew up in central Utah and uh, Wasatch Front, right by Murray Parkway Golf Course. Um, <clears throat> somehow managed to uh, graduate high school, uh, went on a Mormon mission to Brazil and um, spent some time in the Middle East. Came back, did uh, University of Utah, and that's where I had a really fortunate experience with the University Growth Fund. It was called University Venture Fund at the time, but uh, very innovative at the time, still innovative today. I think there's maybe two or three now, but it was the only one for a long time. But it was a full force multiplier um, against um, Harvard Business School and investment banking. So at the time, it was a $22 million student led venture capital fund. And um, there was some adult supervision with Tom Stringham and, and Peter Harris, but the money spent the same as if it was Greylock or Sequoia. Um, but we would get syndicated late on deals and it could be bioscience, it could be SaaS, it could be a leveraged buyout. Um, so we'd have five days instead of two months to do due diligence. Um, and we'd come in and uh, kind of fill out around and uh, it was really <clears throat> what changed my life as far as like career because um, learned a lot about venture capital, but more importantly, like good writing, um, meeting deadlines, also knowing that it's not the end of the world if um, there are typos and things <clears throat> and uh, all the details aren't entirely perfect. Um, you know, it's not like we're making violins here. We're trying to get deals across, um, but we'd sleep on the floor and just like, you can't do any of that anymore, even though it wasn't that long ago. Um, but I learned a lot about business and uh, uh, had to enroll in an MBA program to do that. So I really got an MBA just so I could be a part of, of UGA for two years. Um, and then worked for startups here and in the Bay Area. Um, worked for private equity here and in the Bay Area. Uh, did economic development with um, Stuart Clayson in Salt Lake City. Uh, for a year, a uh, year and a half. Um, and that's where I met this group of Gundersons and Clint Betts. And we were going to do Start Fest or Start SLC. Um, and that's the time I went over and, and uh, helped with the church and state. Bought an old church, turned it into an incubator, co working space. Um, I remember passing a key off to Clint at 2 a.m. Uh, so he could open the doors for media interviews for Start SLC eight years ago. Uh, we had like circus, gypsy, trapeze, we were just idiotic morons, just not knowing what we're doing. But that was Start SLC. Um, and Church and State was where, you know, the pitch competitions are were. And, um, then there's Start Provo. And um, I was just down here right after this office had opened having lunch with Clint. I was like, this thing's getting kind of big and out of control. And uh, I said, well, I'll, I'll join up. Um, regret that decision um, <laughs> every day. No, I'm just kidding on that one. Um, so that's what led me to Silicon Slopes. Um, Silicon Slopes kind of interacts with the venture community, the startup uh, and entrepreneur community. And then behind the scenes, we do interact with uh, workforce development, economic development. So it's those three things. And I can at the very least talk about that. So that's how I ended up here. Um, we've built the team through interns. Um, we're lucky enough to hire one or two folks with a little bit more um, gray in their beard. Um, but it's just been very, very organic, very bootstrapped without the upsides of like, you know, a startup. Um, if you're going to raise money, you have to do that through sponsorships and partnerships. You can't mm. leverage debt or anything like that. So it's always the budget's very clear. Um, so there's upsides and downsides to that. Um, and then each year trying to build on what we've done and uh, fix the mistakes. And now we're here in 2023. Very cool. Very, very cool. Thanks for, uh, you know, helping us understand the backstory of <clears throat> not only, um, you know, your journey, but also the journey of Silicon Slopes and, you know, kind of how this all got started, which, by the way, Church and State, still my favorite co-working space ever, you know, just taking that old church. Um, with you know it's cool old architecture and old brick and, and that kind of stuff and i don't know if you remember uh, many years back we came down and and helped out with the network there yeah. and that kind of stuff um um <clears throat> but um 
in such a cool building, right? And such a cool yeah. vibe in that in that space. Yeah. And by the way, what better way to kind of get a start in business than to be part of the University of Utah Venture Fund um, in, you know, as, as a student, right? Uh, yeah. Like the amount of exposure and the amount of experience you get um, in that type of a, you know, situation, that's, um, you know, I'm very envious, right? Um, so yeah. um, it, it, it all starts to add up and, and make a lot more sense now. Yeah. Um, John, let's, let's go to you. Tell us a little bit about your journey. You know, um, you've done a lot of things, John. Um, a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't guess, you know, um, all of the different things that you've done. Um, and you're not that old. I mean, you're what, 32 or something. Um, <laughs> I wish I were 32. How good would that be? I know you're older than Turned that, but... 41 this summer. Hey, all right. That was, that was a, a bit of a, a check in the mirror. It's like, holy smokes, are you really this old now, John? <laughs> and my kids remind me of that every day, which is really funny. Um, the balding doesn't help. So that's why I love hats. <laughs> we're purveyors of great hats. Hey, you know, so yeah. you're always more classy than I am, though. You know, I, I grew up here locally, um, grew up in a, a fantastic family. I was very fortunate to have just a great family. Um, I had six older sisters. I had a younger brother. All of them were remarkably more talented than I was. And so I like got to soak all this in, right? And it was really fun. And uh, I'm in a I'm a proud Olympus High graduate. Um, still, some of my closest friends are from there, which is, is kind of fun. And um, and and I had this insatiable curiosity from the from the time I can remember. And I loved people, still do. And I loved figuring out how to solve problems with people and kind of meet their needs. And as a little kid, I you know, I I did you know um, lawns and ended up in high school doing concrete porches and stuff for neighbors and stairs and steps. And I always had some little business going, which was really fun. Um, I failed often early and, um, and it taught me a heck of a lot of lessons. And like many here, um, after high school, I served uh, at Latter-day Saint Mission, went to Mexico, learned Spanish. That opened my eyes in a whole nother way um, on the importance of relationships, people culture, connectivity, understanding each other, helping one another. Anyway, came home and uh, I enrolled in, in school at the University of Utah. Um, I got a presidential scholarship and, uh, and then four months later, after one semester, dropped out of school and my mom, I thought I, thought I was going to kill my mom from that, like the trauma. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I became a franchisee having been involved in high school with the Love Sack team, um, I then went and bought four of my own franchises with a really close friend of mine. And so we moved to Seattle, did that. Those are fun stories for another day. And, yeah. and, then, um, and then I went back to school um, at the end of, of 06 and uh, met some remarkable people at the University of Utah. Um, and this was in keeping a promise to my mother I remember the day like I was pulling out of our family's driveway with this massive Penske truck full of my first like order of inventory for Love Sack and like all these home furnishings to build out our own store, all this stuff. And my mom's crying and she says, John, just promise me you'll get a college education. <laughs> and, and pulling away, I, I promised her, I said, I'll do it, mom. So I went back kept that promise and at school it was an amazing promise to keep met my wife uh, you know greatest thing that's ever happened to me and my family and, and being able to have my wonderful kids um and then and i met some really remarkable key people that changed my life um and and as a shout out one would be kirk jowers uh he we became close friends and i immediately realized that I was kind of a fish out of water back in school at that point because I'd run a couple of businesses. I was hyper impatient about like trying to get through school. And so I just like loaded myself up with all these, with all these credits and courses. And he helped me get approval for all this stuff. And then he helped me like get into a number of internships, which led to um, kind of this blossoming uh, reality of entrepreneurship and venture capital. And I worked for Paul Alstrom and I actually moved to Mexico. Yeah. San Pedro, yeah. part of Monterey, and it was amazing. And and Paul taught me a ton. And that that group was really cool. Like I I look back, and some of my best friends are from there. I love Paul. The team from Mexico was remarkable. And then it was myself, Dalton Wright, 
and Davis Smith of Cotopaxi. And Dalton, as you know, is a partner at Kickstart. And so, uh, and that kind of like propelled me into a variety of things. And I won't bore people with the rest of what, what happened in my career, but it started at several companies, failed at a few, succeeded at a few, and, um, and have loved that journey. And, um, and then I remember the day when I, I kind of had some freedom and time off and my wife and I were living in Arizona and Garrett here and Clint start pinging me a little more often. And, uh, they just start kind of pressing on me and asking me what I'm up to. And we start talking probably almost every week at one point and they, they got me to agree to come here, which was one of the best decisions of my life. At the time I thought, okay, I'll do it. Um, I want to help my community and I'll, I'll go do it for a little bit with them and, and that'll be it. And getting here and seeing how legitimately seeing how much the board cares and how much the team cares about the community was what transformed the way I think about Utah and Silicon Slopes in a variety of ways. And so I've thrown all my effort into this for a number of years, been here four years now, and I've loved it. And um, it's, it's just been a really remarkable journey to observe what I grew up with in Utah, what we grew up with in Utah, and then what it's become. It, it, is, it is the best state and best economy to live in in the entire world, yeah. right? And there's so much opportunity that has come from community effort. That happens to have been centralized in certain ways within Silicon, centralized isn't the best word, but it's, it's like congregated into Silicon Slopes in this org, and then it also goes out into other orgs, and it's just this really cool symbiosis. And I oftentimes find myself wishing that every entrepreneur, every person that I come across in business could sit in this office, be part of this org for at least two, three months so they could just see like, oh my gosh, well, there's this an is really cool. To uh, budding entrepreneurs, come be an intern Amen. for a few months. <laughs> Seriously. So I know you guys have, you know, built on, on interns. I've seen it, you know, over the years, right? Um, yeah. Which, um, by the way, just, you know, some really cool opportunities. Of course, Paul Alstrom is a legend, you know, in business and in tech in Utah. Um, you know, having worked with him and the venture fund, you know, literally the very first venture fund in Mexico, um, which, you know, um, it's funny, the backstories and how small the world is, you know, one of my good friends, Joe Reyna, who was instrumental um, he, at the time, he was um, on the cabinet of Mexicans in the exterior for mm. President Fox. And he was instrumental in getting, you know, Paul and that venture fund set up in Mexico. Um, <clears throat> and so just, you know, it, the networks, right. And, and, you know, you having worked with, um, with Davis Smith and other people, you know, that, um, have gone on to really, you know, th this ecosystem, but the people behind the ecosystem is what over decades has really brought Utah to this point of, of where we're really flourishing and thriving as, as a, as an, you know, as, as a, as an ecosystem, right. As a business ecosystem and tech ecosystem here. So John, yeah. let's, let's come back real quick to, um, uh, you know, I, I know Garrett touched on the threefold mission of Silicon Slopes. Maybe, um, you know, in, in the community sometimes, and you guys are, you're an organization who's doing a lot with very little, um, you know, a nonprofit um, who's trying to make a significant impact, um, you know, here in Utah, an impact that, uh, that helps and enables business and entrepreneurship and startups and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, Maybe, and, and just in all of that work that you're doing and the fact that um, there's so much going on and a, a lot of volunteer talent, particularly around producing an event like, you know, Summit that's coming up in, in a couple of weeks here. Um, you know, I think sometimes the, the, the community um, gets clouded on, on the understanding of what the mission of Silicon Slopes is and what you're all up to. So maybe delve into that a little bit and then mm. let's, um, you know, um, touch on some other topics. Yeah, and I'll invite Garrett to to uh, weigh in here as well with me on on this. And, and that's a really it's a really cool question of you to ask, actually, Earl, because it is it is a we found it is it's not a common I wouldn't say it's a common misconception, but it, it's a mis misconception that exists that Silicon Slopes is kind of out there to you know for some ulterior motive. I don't know, uh, and but it's just not the reality at all. Um, our sole, legitimately, the sole focus is how do we increase 
opportunity and access for young people, old people, male, female, you name it. How do we increase access? And so the challenge with that is, is we all, especially as entrepreneurs, when we go out and try and grow a business or grow anything for that matter, you quickly realize we need to water these seeds and that requires a lot of money and resources. And so it's kind of been this interesting uh, uh, journey where, you know, in the early days of Start SLC, as Garrett was talking about, it was bootstrapped, it's duct tape and bailing wire. It's like, let's go do this thing. And it's great. And, and it's still the same now, but we also need to include big companies, et cetera, because they're generous and they're willing to put a solid amount of money and capital into these projects that we do, especially the summit, because it's astronomically expensive. I mean, it's totally nuts how expensive yeah. the event is. <clears throat> and so we need to do that. And then we also need to be able to meet the needs and the interests they have, which are not, they're not entirely selfish. Like they're giving a lot of money, which is a donation. And then we're also activating benefits for those companies. And they, all of them understand it's like, okay. So, and, and I wish, I actually wish people could be on calls that I'm on with um, top executives at companies that make the decision to donate to Silicon Slopes and become sponsors because they do it because they care about Utah and the community. It isn't just about the community. It's obviously about them too, but they're part of it. Right. Sure. And so they're willing to give quite a bit. We, you know, it's, it's also interesting. Like we years ago understood that summit itself, it was this growing organism because of the culture and people of Utah. Right. Like yeah. we, I know the founding members would never take credit for how it grew. Like they def definitely pulled the levers and pressed the buttons needed to get it going, but it was very much a community effort. It still is. And in that reality, as we've gone forward, we've never wanted to become because we shouldn't an expo. We don't want to sell 10,000, you know, you know, small businesses and then smaller and, and get people to buy all these tickets. And we don't even, and we don't want to have a thousand booths at summit. Because that totally diminishes what it is and what it needs to remain. And so with that, what we've done is we've built year-long sponsorships. So it's a 12-month engagement. Yeah. And while the challenge there is the price point is, is hard for young companies and small companies, but we're actually doing it for them so that they can come and hobnob at, at a really cheap rate. In some cases, they get a free ticket from a friend, right? Yeah so that they can come and talk so they don't have to spend to get a booth, et cetera. And, yeah. and so, and where we've worked on start fest and whatnot, we'll, we'll increase the access for the small companies to have booths, et cetera, too, over the years, we'll, we'll keep doing that, but it's hard to change. Like we kind of have to grow into some of this. Right. But, um, and so it, that's the value and it is all about community. It's all about relationships. Yeah. And where people need help, we provide it. We do a lot of it quietly. We don't care about the credit. Um, we'll get behind any organization that needs the help that is legitimately looking to help the community in a way, right? Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the cool thing about the spirit of, of business in Utah, you know, is, is I really think that there are so many people that are genuinely invested in bolstering up the community right um and doing what 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 they can and what's possible and, and that's as you mentioned you know sponsorship is is at the core of that as well of course you know in a corporate world sponsorship is also brand exposure right there there are strategic reasons to 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 be a sponsor um but um there, there are good intentions behind you know speaking as a person who sponsors right um silicon slopes and a lot of other you know communities and and, and events um, you know, it's, it's a genuine, authentic desire to contribute to the community and bolster up the ecosystem. Right. Um, and, and the fact that we have that in Utah and that we have organizations like Silicon Slopes that are, are helping us become, you know, a thriving, um, hotbed of activity in, in business and in tech. Right. Um, we, we have to, I think, you know, uh, acknowledge that. And as you mentioned, um, you know, John, it's important myself again as a sponsor um you know benefits are year long you know it's it's exposure throughout all of silicon slopes events it's exposure in publications it's exposure in social media um and, and it's an opportunity to collaborate on you know on a lot of different fronts and so um uh 
anyways, thank you, John, for, you know, yeah. for kind of um, you know helping us understand that a little bit more. Um, Garrett, let's let's go over and talk to you a little bit about Slope Summit. Um, I know in the last two years there's been a little bit of a branding change here from Silicon Slopes Tech Summit to Silicon Slopes Summit. Um, let's talk just a little bit about you know why that is, and then also let's start to delve into what's going to happen here. And what are we a week and a half out? Is that what it is on the 29th and 30th? Yep. Yeah, there we go. Just um, yeah, two two just over two weeks out yeah. is where we're at. Um, so um, yeah, go ahead, Garrett. Yeah, Silicon Slope Summit used to be called Tech Summit. Not a lot of thought goes into changing that, but there's a lot of uh, companies that are in outdoor retail or consumer goods, um, and they've always been a part of Silicon Slopes. Um, <clears throat> you can always know when you're talking to somebody that doesn't quite grasp what Silicon Slopes is because they'll say IT industry. Um, but if you were to look at our content, the archaeological dig would be very interesting over the last six years. Um, you're going to have big enterprise SaaS, and uh, you're going to have IT. Uh, you're going to have fintech, but you're going to have a lot of outdoor retail. You're going to have a lot of manufacturing. You're going to have a lot of uh, uh, consumer goods. So um, we don't really give a damn about any industry more than others because it's entrepreneurship, right? Uh, using meat and potatoes as an example, it's entrepreneurial journeys. Whether you're selling lemonade on the side of the road or have some weird fintech model where you're trimming off 0.003% on transaction. Who knows, right? I've listened to all the business models over the years, but the underlying themes are, are entrepreneurial. Um, so that's why. And, um, you know, we've, we've built it over the years. Uh, we've had upwards of 30,000 people. We've had seven. We've had 15 even in the, the teeth of COVID last year. Um, and it's, it's a really unique event, right? You could, uh, you could be a service provider and your uh, little kiosk would be next to Google or Microsoft in years past. Uh, there's uh, Real Salt Lake, Utah Warriors Rugby. It's way cooler than an industry event where everyone's just like lock stock and like, oh, we're talking about FinTech for the next four days. But no, no, this is fun, entrepreneurial. So it is a two-day event. Um, this year it'll be at Vivint Smart Home Arena. Uh, the downsides there, it's a new venue, playbook got thrown out the window, so now we're figuring it all, all of that out. Upsides are way bigger. Um, the energy is going to be really great. The, the sponsor village will be in the concourse of, of Vivint. Everyone will walk through it to get to the food, to get to the seats. Um, main stage is going to look amazing. The afternoon breakouts are going to look amazing. Um, we foolishly over the years have had 13, 14 breakouts, right? That's almost 200 speakers. That is a lot of cat herding. Yeah. Uh, this year we have four, and that was by design, but also we were limited on on space. So the afternoon sessions this year, a lot of the speakers would be would have been morning session in previous years. Um, so if you have even an ounce of talent and uh, an acumen to talk to people, showing up at Summit is shooting fish in a barrel for two days. Whether you want new friends, new clients, uh, new opportunities. Uh, let, you know, I'm talking attendees, yeah. right? Um, you can sit in the hallway and gab the entire time. You can watch the content and listen. Uh, there's going to be obviously with each su successful year, a lot of bolt-ons of events that aren't even ours, yeah. you know, and you'll get invited to those. Um, so again, Funny that. the biggest doofus on planet earth could have a glorious experience at summit. Is that and, a technical term, doofus? Yeah, that's what, <laughs> in looking in the mirror every day. Um, so that's how we've designed it, right? Like if you want to listen to the to the speakers, like my mom would, um, but then I know people that have been to Summit for the last six years and they couldn't name a single speaker, yeah. including Zuckerberg, including Tim. They didn't watch any of it. Yeah. Um, so it's very but flexible. They, but they likely closed two or three big deals or at least one it's yeah it's just cool that way well and that's yeah. that's just it uh this is potentially the largest gathering in entrepreneurship in utah um every year right um, yeah. and of course it's attracted a significant following and a significant amount of attendees that come from out of state um, as well every year yeah um the vibe's always fantastic it's very collaborative everybody's 
you know, it, it's like an even playing field um, and everybody's just there to support each other and help and connect. Right. Um, I know it's been a you know, significant value to us as Nexus IT to be, you know, involved on, on an ongoing basis. Right. And not only the event, but just, you know, Silicon Slopes as an organization um, year round. Um, so, you know, thank you for, you know, building a platform, right, that um, certainly helps bring business and entrepreneurs together in Utah. Um, we know there's lots of those, you know, um, but Silicon Slopes is one of the most prominent. It's one of the largest. You guys have, you know, really built something very meaningful here um, that has continued to be a mainstay and, and a massive contributor to, you know, to the ecosystem. So yeah. kudos thank to you. you. Kudos well, to your team. That's nice for you to say. Yeah. And it, on this, maybe one last point on this, well, maybe we'll touch on it a little later too, but like when we think of what's made our culture remarkable here in Utah and the business culture, people care. There's a, there's this level of generosity that is uncommon. And, and as, as we focus on that, like I, I just have this very strong belief and it's not even a belief. It's something I know at this point in my career. Yeah. When people have each other's backs, right? Like even even frenemies, for example, even enemies, for example, or whatever you, term you might come up with for some, you know, relationship. We when we double down, and we invest in relationships rather than transactions, we're ensuring that the transactions will be optimized. Yeah. Right. And so that and that breeds and fosters in a community hope and hope is as it says in Shawshank Redemption is Andy sitting on the wall hope is the best maybe the best of things like right and and for an entrepreneur an entrepreneur I can you, tell you hope what are, is. <laughs> what are you gonna do without hope like yeah. if you pull that hope out of an ecosystem if you pull it out of a family of friendship any relationship what is it then it becomes a transaction. It's like you don't have something to look forward to and hope for and drive for and sacrifice for, give up yourself for. Yeah. And that's the spirit of entrepreneurship. It's the spirit of great relationships. It's the spirit of great companionships, right? Like it's, it's the spirit of great families and how, whatever other terminology uh, and definitions of these constructs, social constructs that, that form our relationships. And so my like for me and i know people that talk to me i'm i'm not i don't love to be public so to speak but in forever about relationships and the efficacy of them because they are we we are the currency in an age where we've gone through all these unique coins and cryptocurrencies and on the blockchain and exacting transactions all this stuff that has its place it's really important but I think more than ever, we're learning, or it should become obvious, we the people, individuals, we're the currency, always have been, always will be. Yeah. It just depends on what's bolted on and what we choose to support on that. But as a community, let's do that together. Like, let's stick up for each other. Let's have each other's backs and continue to do that. And Utah's done that well. People surrounding Silicon Slopes have helped build it into what it is, done it well. And let's go into the next phase. Uh, uh, of legacy for our state and keep doing that and support one another in all the ventures that we have going and find the find the purest truest things that are going to help us magnify who we are as great human beings and and the great relationships we're blessed to have that's the greatest wealth yeah no, by so far and away there's so much there john to, to dig into and um it looks like we're, we've got some um uh, the, the video is a little choppy. It might just be on my side here, but uh, is it just me? Okay, all right. Never mind. <laughs> no, no sweat. <laughs> but um, anyways, I was um, going to say maybe it was me like bumping the table. Or no, no, it's just a little fuzzy here on my end. But it might be that just my wireless connection here, right? But uh, cool. anyways, there's so much there. Um, you know, in business, it's so easy to kind of forget about what really drives a business and what's behind it and what's really important, right? And that is people it's the relationships it's the connection and, and as you mentioned you know john when people really get that and really lean into it um you produce what's happening in utah right now right um you produce community organizations you produce um you know entrepreneurs and uh leaders who want to get behind initiatives and help and want to create you know a, an ecosystem that's thriving where 
you know, the, the saying, you know, rising tide lifts all ships, right? That, that becomes a, a reality. And that's what we've seen, at, you know, a, a, from an entrepreneur who's been doing business in the Utah ecosystem for 24 years this month, actually, um, you know, Nexus IT is 24 years now, um, <clears throat> 24 years old. Um, Congrats. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we're just about to hit 25, you know, in a year here, and we're excited about that. But um, <laughs> anyways, I can tell you the landscape 24 years ago was very different access to community organizations, to ecosystem, to uh, peer groups, to events and all that kind of stuff. It just, it wasn't the same, right? And, and organizations like Silicon Slopes coming along with vision of, um, you know, how we increase opportunity and access, right? Um, it, it is 100% one of the reasons why Utah is thriving right now. And it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful time to be part of this. It's a beautiful thing to see. Um, by the way, we're in trouble. Clint's, uh, Clint's watching us. So, uh, we're all in trouble. Here, uh -oh. but, uh, yeah. Um, so Kira, let's come back around. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the speakers, why, you know, people would want to come out to, to summit this year. Um, who are some of the speakers? And then I know you've given us, um, exclusive access to announce one of the keynotes today. Is that uh, going to happen here? Sure. So maybe let's talk John about some of the other one. speakers and then we'll come back around to cool, yeah, that. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, We'll just smorgasbord it here. Jim Quick, uh, best-selling author, uh, Chris Lee, co-founder of Artifact, David Green, CEO of Ernest. On the local front, we have Taffy, James Thornton. Uh, we have the CEO of Atlassian, Anu Barwaj, I believe that's how you say that. Howard Wright from AWS Global Startups, Jake Wood, uh, founder and CEO of Groundswell. Um, we've got folks from Builder AI, Vanta, Locally, a few more from uh, like Entrada. Sid Tetro will be moderating several um, Sid panels. Um, so this year <clears throat> is going to be really cool in that um, if the diversity, uh, both in gender and skin color, all of that, easily the most, but the diversity of companies as well, because it was future, ethos, community, these are like the tracks that we've we've landed on um, <clears throat> in growth. So pretty much any entrepreneurial business could be in several of those, right? Some are uh, more geared towards that, but it enabled us to really have a lot of flexibility. Um, so what you think might not apply in future with the right presentation and the right interview, you'd see that it does, right? Um, you know, like community could be easily, you know, Pandora, Spotify, all those that you mentioned at the beginning. Sure. Um, or it could be like uh, the National Parks Service, right? Like one year I'd love to have the, the director of the National Parks to talk about community because that's a big one. Shout right? out. Massive. Yeah. Call out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, uh, the afternoon sessions uh, are, are going to be great. Um, and then in the morning we've got, uh, Steve Young, right? Yeah, that's Steve Young's the the one I was going to drop today. Oh, He's hey. agreed to come. Yeah, so. Steve Young can throw a football and can articulate all sorts of fun stories, right? And yeah. On that note, like Steve might be one of the most unique entrepreneurial uh, uh, entrepreneurs maybe the world knows. Would you seriously think about his career? It's an interesting one. And he sees, uh, you know, being on the capital side now, like I could tell you for, for, from Steve's point of view, he sees that it is an investment in the best people that are willing to work for a given community they've created through technology, right? Like, so he's so passionate about that. He's seen it over and over now, and he did it himself, right? Like you go from football player to investor, number of his own companies. And he's written a book now, and um, it's an, I've read parts of it. It's an amazing book. It's about love and communities and connectivity. It's remarkable. Yeah. But he'll speak, it, what he'll speak on is, is really awesome, his whole entrepreneurial journey, which is cool. And it goes back to what Garrett was saying earlier. Like we, the, the entrepreneurial stories, they're the heartbeat of everything that we, we kind of do in our world. When, when you think about it, like we are all addicted to great stories. Yeah, we are. It's why it's why so many of us are are Netflix junkies. It's why we're podcast junkies. It's why you know we love a good story. Why? Yep. 
it, we glean from those stories pieces of who we are and pieces of who we want to be. It's this really cool reflective process as a human being. And so, and Garrett's being humble about the lineup this year. Genuinely, we were, we were talking about, we've been talking about this for weeks now. It is the best lineup from top to bottom that Summit has ever had. Yeah. And every year we think, man, is there any way we're going to match what we just did? And we tend to do it. And it's, but it isn't us that does it. It's like, there's all these different appendages and people that help do it, but it is the best top to bottom yeah. ever. We're going to know the lineups really, people are going to hear really stories impressive. that are remarkable. The fact that you guys have, you know, concentrated. And I think that's a really smart move to concentrate down to four tracks, right? Because too much, um, it's hard to really focus and add value, right? And your team gets spread too thin. And, and by the way, I mean, you know, some, it takes hundreds of volunteers to pull off, right? Um, yeah. We see that behind, you know, behind the scenes, um, th there's so much going on. And so, um, you know, really focusing and getting the right people in those four tracks. Um, you know, obviously this is a big announcement. Steve Young, a local legend, um, you know, um, has done so many things, um, you know, in sports and in business and in the community. Um, that's very exciting. I know you guys have got some other, you know, big keynotes that you're going to announce in the next couple of weeks here. Yeah. So everybody, you know, keep an eye out for that stuff. Um, if you don't have your tickets, go get your tickets. Um, you know, we got just a couple minutes left. I know you guys have some other meetings coming up. Video is completely bugged out, hasn't it? Um, this is unfortunate. I don't know what happened, but um, uh, I'm I'm completely frozen on video right now. So sorry if you're joining us on video. Hopefully the audio is uh, is just fine. Um, anyways, a uh, couple minutes left. Maybe just some parting thoughts. Um, you know, anything else that you two want to share? And then let's make sure that everybody knows about how they can get access to Summit. Yeah. So uh, summit.siliconslopes.com. Um, where you can get your tickets we've got bogo offers currently and um we i think have come to the realization that you know folks from outside of, of utah uh almost always say this is, should be a thousand dollar event what are you guys doing um <clears throat> especially folks from like boston and new york they're just aggressive even though they don't have context it's you're an idiot why is this <laughs> event not <more? laughs> which we appreciate <clears throat> but that's not going to be the way it is right uh utahns uh, are not like that and as part of like uh, what john was talking about access um it's priced very affordably and um you know through sponsor allocations and community donations um you'd have to be very anti-entrepreneurial to not be able to find a ticket um and then last kind of closing thought would be um if you <clears throat> have had ideas or you've had ambitions the last 10 minutes the last 10 years uh if you've if you've ever thought like when am i going to make my move you should come to summit um it is old-fashioned but you just bump into people it is so much easier than hawking coffee meetings on linkedin and you never know what will happen right so if you're sitting on the fence ready to make your next move dollars to donuts this one will be uh, a lot better uh, for your next move, you should should come away inspired and and very well connected. Um, the stories that we've heard over the years, uh, we're really good at uh, at making these connections that ultimately end up in in a lot of <clears throat> big deals. Uh, last thing for me is over the years, probably done this fifty times. We've had trade groups, trade organizations um, of all sorts. They could be delegations from actual countries. They could be groups from entire regions like the Middle East, and they've come and uh, asked directly how did you guys do this and the answer is you need to find a few people dumb enough um to keep smashing their head into the wall um it, but ultimately just entrepreneurship man yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and you know some of them have offered a lot of money right mm -hmm. like come replicate this yeah. in a country that we have no knowledge of and i don't think it can be done because what makes this a little bit unique um is that for the most part, folks in this community don't pull the ladder up after they've made it. Um, they're supportive. They answer emails. They pick up the phone. Uh, they give 10 minutes. They give 15 minutes. Oftentimes more, right? And uh, if anyone ever had the time and inclination, it would be fun to, to do uh, a review of all of this, right? Because if I pay attention, I've done almost 400 podcasts and 300 on stage um, interviews. 
Uh, just as a quick example, it happens a lot, but just this past year, just in random conversations, a lot can be traced back to Todd Peterson, just as an example. It happens a lot with other people as well. And they weren't at, you know, these stories were just part of an answer to a previous question, but he, his name was in there, right? Um, and without those and, you know, dozens of other examples, this really wouldn't exist. So my hope is that Utahns and, and this community keep that attitude. Let's not make it any bigger than it needs to be. Let's stay kind, stay collaborative, be nice. Um, we'll always be a, a small community. Like if we were to talk some crap on someone on this podcast, five minutes, it'll boomerang back, right? Absolutely. This isn't Mumbai. This isn't Los Angeles. This is Utah. So yeah, um, yeah come to Summit. And uh, thank you so much. One of the best parts that we uh, have it with this job is just interacting with cool people like you, um, getting to know you guys, getting to know your business. Uh, what you guys do is amazing, and uh, it's fun to watch from the sidelines. And uh, kudos to you and your team. And again, thank you for having us. Thank you, Garrett. Thank yeah. you so much. You know, so parting words from from Garrett Clark, Executive Director of Silicon Slope, says, "Stay kind." Um, I like that. Um, that's a that's a good motto. It's a good you know. Um, philosophy to live by in, in business and and definitely again one of the the secret weapons to why utah is thriving right now john uh, yeah. parting thoughts from you my friend i mean amen to that what you both just said you know what i would say is um it, if you knew what we knew inside of silicon slopes you'd realize like holy smokes there's a lot of work that goes in n not looking for any credit whatsoever i'm simply explaining that and you would say to yourself then you know what i'm gonna go buy a ticket to help support this. Yeah. There's a grind that's happening for the community on behalf of the community. And I, I'm going to go spend a hundred something bucks or max 300 bucks to go get a ticket. On that note, we're, I'll give a sneak peek to everyone right now. This afternoon we'll be launching uh, a digital asset ticket. It is called the, uh, uh, it is called the lift pass. There will be 750 of them only. They'll be bought through open sea. Uh, there's, uh, you can buy through MetaMask wallet and those 750 digital assets, um, there's going to be really cool offers throughout the coming 12 months. I'll give a couple of hints, Traeger, Taffy, DPS skis, just a hint, a few, mm. um, and there will be more. And that, that's the first ever ticket that you can buy at Summit that you can actually purchase also the uh, vip access typically that's just for sponsors and such so that that'll be a really cool ticket um and you know my parting thought would be this i'm really grateful that we live in the state we live in that we have the ecosystem we have and i have learned that touching on what i said earlier a little bit it is because there is generosity that is abundant here um there are plenty of people that have grown insanely awesome companies and made a lot of money. And there's reason to celebrate that. But I'll tell you that a number of those people I know well don't want that. That's not what's celebratory to them. What's celebratory to them is the people they have in their lives and the, the lives they've changed in the process. And so what I would say is let's celebrate one another for the best reasons, not because we make a lot of money and, and look, unicorns and, and raises and rounds to get closed. It's really cool. We should talk about it. It's totally noteworthy, but what is truly celebratory? We should ask ourselves that often. And, and in the process of asking that the final parting thought is this, wherever you're standing, go celebrate someone and ask how you can give back, go do something. I love that. R really great, uh, you know, parting thoughts there, John. Thank you so much. And that's, you know, I, I see this movement, and and I'm I'm proud that um, that this movement is happening not only in Utah but, um, you know, nationwide and worldwide. And that is, you know, social entrepreneurship, right? Um, mm -hmm. Understanding and realizing that business um, not only can fill a role that um, that is above and beyond making money and, and providing employment, but it can do really meaningful things in the community and the world to create shift and impact and change and improvements, right? Um, and I, th I think we're seeing a time, and certainly here in the Utah ecosystem, we're seeing a lot of people who 
are leaning into that. You know, uh, it's not just about me and how much money I can make and, and how much I can raise, right? It's about what can I do with that, right? When I'm on a mission, when I have a vision to execute on something, how can I bring the greater overall community into that and create an impact, right? And so that's, um, I, that is again one of those secret weapons I think that we're seeing happen here in Utah. Um, I'm grateful that that's kind of your parting you know, thought there, John. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so um, we want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, this has been a fantastic segment. We're sorry that we had some video problems. I think we just had some, some internet bandwidth issues here in the studio, unfortunately, today. Um, but we do have this all captured um, on uh, high-definition video. We will repost it. Um, uh, the audio will be reposted as well. Um, John and Garrett, thank you so much for joining me today on TechBeat. Um, this is what TechBeats is about. It's about telling the stories about the founders, about the leaders behind the scenes and how people play a role, you know, in, in, in business. And so um, I really appreciate your time. Just a reminder, some of our upcoming guests, Sid Tetro, Josh Little, um, Tara Anderson, Mallory Lovestad, Aubrey Murray, uh, Nate Randall, Tara Spaulding, Romaine Marshall, Johnny Hanna, all coming up uh, before year's end here on, on TechBeats. So um, keep an eye out for those segments. And uh, make sure you, you join us all at, um, at Slope Summit here on the 29th and 30th of September. If you don't have your ticket, um, you know, again, go to, go to the Slope's website. Um, you can get them there, summit.siliconslopes.com. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Um, or, you know, reach out to your, your, your nearest friend that's a sponsor. Um, there is some sponsorship allocation of tickets. You know, those go fast. I know, you know, most of ours are gone already. Um, but um, reach out to your closest friends to see who might have uh, available tickets still. Um, otherwise, you know, they're BOGO right now, you know, go get a buddy, um, you know, and, and buy a ticket for 150 bucks each, right? It's the best yeah. deal in the world for a tech conference and business conference, no doubt. Yeah. hundred percent. All right. Well, thank you all so much. Um, thank we're going to sign off. Thanks, Earl. Appreciate it. Yep. We'll see y'all.